morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you all as we gather in on this beautiful morning. Come on into worship. Let us stand as we sing our opening hymn together. Welcome. Welcome to Riverside Park United Methodist Church. It is a beautiful morning to be with one another in worship. Let us turn to one another with the love and peace of Jesus Christ. Hello, hello, hey. And welcome those of you guys who are first time guests. We especially welcome you to worship this morning. Yeah. <laughs> if you're thinking of anybody who may need, uh, may need to hear from you, maybe you haven't talked to them in a while. Um, so maybe send them a little message. Also, those of you guys online, I didn't forget about you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Um, let us comment to each other and say good morning. Yeah, all those good things. At this time, our scripture comes from Psalm 42, verse 1 through 8. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me continually, Where is your God? <clears throat> These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went from the throng and led them in procession to the house of God, with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me, therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Mazar. 
deep calls to deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us continue worship this morning.
Father's Day. Well, happy Father's Day to all the men in worship this morning. And we are going to sing a song that I've always reflected on as just a wonderful song, not only to our Father, but also just as a, uh, as a reminder of who we follow and, uh, and who we love. be seated and we're going to have our kids message at this time so if you want to come on up you would be welcome in fact let me grab my bulletin so I don't forget stuff 
Thank you. All right. Come on, come on. I love your dress this morning. You always have the best dresses. All right. So, here. You, okay, I'll come to you. Deal. All right. So, we're going to do two things this morning. Are you ready? So, one, God has a lot of things in the Bible that God tells us to do, right? And we should listen to God, right? And one of them, God says, be thankful. And we should encourage one another. Does that sound pretty good? So the first thing we're going to do today is, um, today is Father's Day. So what we're going to do is we're going to thank all the guys who are here in church this morning. Even the ones that, uh, even the ones that may not have kids. Uh, even the ones that um, may be in the different places. So we're going to thank all of them. So will you just do me a favor and help me wave? And everybody online, we're going to ask the same thing for you as well. Are you ready? We're going to wave on the count of three and just say thank you. Can you do that? Ready? One, two, three. Three, say thank you. Good job. All right. Um, and so for all, of our, for all of our guys who are present with us this morning, um, we have snacks for you. Um, so at the doorway, and that's, that's all ages. I see, yeah, absolutely, all guys this morning. There are snacks. There are healthier options as well. There's some peanuts and cashews, um, but there's also like, you know, cookies and muffins. But the other thing, the other thing I want to talk to you about this morning is really exciting in church. And I don't know, I don't know if you'll be able to come or not. I hope so. But we are going to have Vacation Bible School coming up the second week of July. All right. So families, if you haven't, I know, yes, um, there is a on the bulletin announce, on the announcement section, there's a little QR code that you can register for Vacation Bible School. If you happen to have some free time that week and you want to help out, you can register and just leave a note that says, hey, I'm here to, to help. Um, but our theme for VBS is going to be rise and shine. Okay? Can you say that? Say the word rise. Shine. All right. Church. Your turn. Rise, rise. Shine. shine. And it comes from a scripture that says, rise and shine and give God the glory. All right? So if, between now and VBS, we're going to use our kids' message to, like, pump ourselves up, to get pumped up for Vacation Bible School. Because in a minute, we're going to have Vacation Bible School to pump up. You ready? Okay? All right. So let's, do you want to pray with me? Do you want to make them pray with us too? All right. Our kids' message has spoken, all right? Well, y'all, we're all going to repeat after me. Ready? Pray. Dear God, thank you for today and summer and the hope of new life. Lift us up that we would give you glory. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you. I know it takes a lot of courage to come up here, but it's awesome that you're part of this church. Thank you. Amen? Yeah. All right. All right. All right, so we're going to jump through some of our announcements. First, again, of course, happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Make sure you grab your snacks. They're in the narthex, or there's a basket over there by that, the end of the pews there. If you're worshiping with us online and you want a snack, like, contact us. We'll figure something out. Um, we also have a youth lock-in coming up Tuesday the 28th. We're partnering with the Presbyterian Church next door. Almost the entire thing will be service-oriented, so you're going to get like 12 community service hours if you want to come and sign up for that. We've got a lot of missions that we're doing, so let us know if we have questions. Also, next Sunday, right after the traditional service, we're going to have a youth and parents meeting. Um, Bobby Brazell will be leading that, so know that that is happening. Again, vacation, oh, sorry, this Thursday at the Riverside Apartments, we're going to do a senior adult Bible study at 1.30. We've done it in the morning in the past, but this Thursday, will I see you there, Miss Eleanor? Yes. Good. 1.30 this Thursday. Um, and then, again, Vacation Bible School is coming up. Get those registrations in. Get ready, church. It's an exciting thing. We get to partner with the YMCA camp that uses our facility for the summer. So we automatically have at least 80 kids participating in, participating in VBS this summer, which is very, very, very exciting. So... 
I think that's it for our traditional announcements. We have a special announcement this morning, so I'm going to invite Tim Ware to come up and share something really fun and silly. <laughs> Summer is a time that can be difficult to stay connected with our church family. So school is out, many people are traveling, they're on vacation, and we just don't see each other as often. How can we stay connected when we're all going in different directions? Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if we could all have, have a part of our church to go with us? So Riverside Park has the perfect solution, and it's PPE. probably familiar with PPE of last year. This is a PPE, personal protective equipment. Well, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> Introducing portable Pastor Emily, <laughs> okay? So you can pick up your very own portable Pastor Emily in the narthex after the service at the church office, or if you're online and you're not here, we can mail one to you, okay? <laughs> so. Um, so remember to take her to you know, the train station, the train depot, Home Depot, wherever you're at this summer, okay? So take a photo when you're out and about, and then you can post it each week to our personal page, uh, the R Riverside Park uh, Facebook page, or you can email it to portablepastoremily at gmail.com. Or you can text it to 904-571-4701, and we'll get it posted for you. Now, if you can't remember all of that, it's on the back. All the directions are on the back. <laughs> okay? So start the week. This week we start by just taking a selfie with Pastor Emily. Okay? And then send it in. Watch Facebook and see what happens. Each week we'll have a challenge um, of what to take your picture with or, ha or your Pastor Emily picture with. Okay? And then just check Facebook, and then the next week on Friday, email blast and on Facebook that will have um, directions of what the next challenge is. So be sure to pick yours up at the end of the service or call the church office, come by the church office, and we'll get one to you. All right, that's it. <laughs> Um, I do want to thank Tim and Bridget for putting that together. The process for creating these things is really cool. Um, but also, church, remember that I trust you. <laughs> I love you, and I trust you. Um, but yeah, I, I, yeah, when they first, they were like, I said, to be honest, I'd rather this be anybody's face but mine. Um, but also, I think it's going to be really, really fun. So, all right. So, let's gather. We're going to have a time of prayer this morning. Um, we're going to do kind of a special blessing because it's Father's Day. But I do want to make sure sharing prayer requests is a really important part of our church and our church life. Um, and so, I want to encourage you in the pews, we have those connect cards, right? Um, again, if you haven't filled out a Connect card, please do so. That, that is how we're keeping track of attendance. But if you have a specific prayer request, we want to share those. Um, you're, feel free to take this time um, to fill that out. We have a team of folks that will pray over them. I, I appreciate praying over them and each of you as well. Um, but as we, as we pray, blessings for, for all the different categories and ways that we celebrate and honor Father's Day. Um, I'm simply going to pray for categories. And if you have a specific person that comes to mind, um, by all means, name that person to God in your heart. All right? Let us pray. Almighty God, indeed, Scripture calls you our Heavenly Father. That's the name that Jesus used for you. And so we know that you have an incredible love for us and for all of your children. We thank you that you have claimed us and adopted us in this incredible way. And also, Lord, we recognize that as people, we are short and faltered reflections of you. And so we know that this morning on Father's Day, there are some that are proud and joyful and excited. And also, Lord, there are some this morning that, that this, this day brings grief. 
And so, Lord, we pray for our brothers and our sisters. We pray for our community and our world. Lord, we start indeed by thanking you for, the, for those who have gone before us in our life, who have encouraged us, who have strengthened us and strengthened our faith. Thank you for those men, especially, who have been encouraging voices in our life. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for those who have the courage to change diapers and assemble band-aids. We thank you for those in our lives who come willing to come alongside and bring words of healing and actions of fixing. Lord God, we thank you for those in our lives who have made things better. Lord, we also this morning pray for those who have not had a positive father influence. Lord, we pray for those who have had abusive or separated relationships or complex relationships. Lord, this morning we especially pray for those who are struggling with addictions or anything else that would separate them from their families. Lord, we name that grief pray for your healing, and recognize that they too are beloved by you. Lord, we pray for those who have stepped up and cared for children that are not biologically related for them. We especially pray for adopted and foster dads. Thank you, Lord, for those that step in, like Joseph stepped in for you. Lord, we pray this morning for dads who are grieving today. We pray for dads that have lost children recently or long ago. We pray for that grief to come alongside that you would hold them and remind them that their children are not forgotten and that you hold them and their children too. Lord, we also pray for children who are grieving the loss of a parent or a parent figure this morning. Again, whether it's incredibly fresh or long ago, Lord, we lift those who grieve the loss of a parent today. Lord, we also pray for those that are excited about the fresh possibility of newly becoming parents. Lord, in that holy and terrifying place of no preparation or lack of preparation or however it feels, Lord, may you surround those folks with a community of support and encouragement. And we pray for, for those who are walking through the complex space of infertility, for those that desire to be parents, and for whatever reason, cannot or are not. Lord, may you foster that space of faith because it's hard. May they know that they do not walk alone. And Lord, simply for our, for our community and those in our extended families, Lord, we pray for those that are caring for parents that are aging or growing older for children that have become that caring role, and again, those complexities therein. May there be space to be faithful to the fifth commandment that calls us to honor our parents, and also to be supportive and give care as needed. Lord, for bodies that age, <laughs> for transitions that come, may you carry us through from grace to grace and strength to strength. Indeed, Lord God, we thank you for your presence through difficult complexities, through joyful moments of goodness. And Lord, we thank you for your constant presence in our lives too. All this we pray with grateful hearts, thanking you for the ways that you have built up this community, for the ancient church fathers from thousands of years ago, for those that have encouraged our faith, for those that are in scripture telling us the way of faithfulness too. 
Lord God, we pray in your name, echoing as Jesus taught us so long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time we are going to turn to a moment of offering. And as part of our, just before our offering, um, Pam, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and come up forward. Um, we, as our, every Sunday, what we're trying to do is just emphasize that our giving is also missional. Um, and one special mission that our church has a long relationship with, the members of our church, is Hogar de Niños, um, which is an orphanage mm-hmm. in the Dominican Republic. In Cristobal. In St. Cristobal. Do you want to talk or are you okay if we no, just kind of... So Pam, Pam flies out tonight to go to Hogar de Niños and visit. You weren't able to go last year because yeah, of the pandemic. Okay. This is the, this, we've missed two years. So this will be the first time in three years yeah. that she's been able to go. Um, but you've been, what, for 10 years? Uh, like 14. 14 years prior. Yeah. So these are boys that you have watched grow up. Um, and so church, we have the very simple but really exciting joy of we're going to we're going to sponsor a pizza party for the boys in the orphanage. Um, and so we're right that's yep. and so we're going to we're we're sending Pam with a gift that'll be part of our offering this morning. So as you give and support the missions of the church, that's one of the things we're supporting. Um, and so we're going to just as we pray over offering, we're going to pray over Pam, pray over the orphanage, um, pray over the boys and the workers that are there. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks um, for the gift of community. We thank you for this space that has created a sanctuary for these boys. We thank you for the sister orphanage that also creates space for girls. Um, We pray that they would be safe and nurtured and loved. We pray for Pam and the team that is traveling. May you bless and keep them. May you encourage their joy, and may they travel, may Pam travel with the love and blessing of this church, Lord God. We give that and ask that she would carry it with her, that she would carry your blessings, and also as she receives the blessings there in the Dominican Republic, that she would return safely and celebrate those joys with us too. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Yes. Take me I'm with you. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> we do have offering plates. There is an online. There's a QR code you can give online as well. Um, you can put your prayer cards in the offering plates. This is a time of continued worship as we give to God. Seeks, seeks 
as the praise team sits, let us pray. Indeed, God, we pray that you would open our hearts, open our lives, that we would live as you would have us live, and we would be faithful in the missions and ministries to which you call us. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Galatians, chapter 3. Um, and for the month of June, I'm going to be preaching from what's called the lectionary. Um, and the lectionary is, is a bunch of scriptures that a whole bunch of church leaders from all kinds of different denominations came together and said, hey, if we, if we read these scriptures on a rhythm about every three years, we would have gone through pretty much the big pieces of scripture. So our passage this morning was chosen more than three decades ago, <laughs> but also it was written thousands of years ago. And so I invite you to hear now the word of the Lord. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, indeed. So the book of Galatians is a letter that Paul wrote to the, the Christian community, the Jesus-following community in the region of Galatia. Um, for my Bible nerds out there, for those of you who happen to be reading the book of Acts, I think sometimes when we read scripture, we just kind of assume that things happen like one after another. Um, but the book of Acts, there's a, around chapters like 12, 13, 14, it starts talking about Paul's missionary journeys to these places. And so that middle section of Acts is where Paul was, was visiting and full of this mission, and he's excited to share the good news of Jesus with the whole world. Um, and then it's through this act of taking journeys, um, and in fact, there's a map of Paul's missionary journeys in our Pentecost window over here if you ever want to check that out. Um, but Paul continues his relationship with these places he's visited by writing them letters. 
And so Galatians is a, is a letter that Paul wrote to the people living in the town of Galatia to say, hey, I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you, I'm grateful for the ways that you're being faithful, and also, let's talk about some spiritual things that are getting in the way. And Galatia, um, the folks in, in, in the region of Galatia, you know, I mean, obviously, nobody is perfect in our faith. You know, there's always struggles, and this is where we wrestle theologically. This is where we do the work of saying, okay, what does Scripture say to us? Where's the Holy Spirit showing up? What is the gospel of Christ in this? What is our mission and our point of faithfulness? And in Galatia, their big tension what, I mean, one of their big points of tension was the fact that you had people following Jesus who were followers of Christ. And remember, somebody remind me, what religion would Jesus have fallen under? Jesus was Jewish. Jesus was Jew like practicing. He went to the temple. He read the scriptures. He proclaimed. Like he he observed the Sabbath. I mean, he got in trouble for the times when on the Sabbath he was doing things like healing people. Um, but the whole reason he got in trouble for it was because he was a good Hebrew Jewish leader. So it would make sense that followers of Jesus, especially those that he knew and worked with, were also. Jewish. And so then, so this is what we have. So this idea of following Jesus, being a follower of Jesus, it started out with folks who were Jewish. They followed the law. They held on to the scriptures as given. And then the crazy thing that started happening is people started coming from outside the Jewish community, especially in Galatia. Galatia happened to be a region where they had folks um, that were coming from other faiths, folks were coming from non-faith, folks were coming um, from different backgrounds, and they were showing up and they were saying, this is amazing, this gospel good news of this, this person who died for sin, who died in order to be alive again, this, this gospel good news where the low are lifted up, where there is... Um, there is worth for those that are cast out to the margins. This Jesus who came to speak to the sinner and the outsider who sat down and broke bread with those that were like societally unacceptable. Like, this is amazing. We want to be part of this, right? Because that's, I mean, at the end of the day, church, the gospel of Jesus Christ is amazing. <laughs> The story of Christ Jesus who claims us and loves us, who wants to see life abundant living in and through us. This God who says, I claim you, now go and live in such a way that that same abundant life is lived out in others. This is amazing. We want I want as many like theological struggles as possible if it means we have new people coming to church. Amen. So this is what was happening, though, is you had this, you, you had folks that were coming in, um, and again, you had folks that were religious leaders, you had folks that were like very good folks who were Jewish, and they're, they're following the law, and you had these Gentiles coming in um, and saying, yes, we're Christian, we love Jesus, we believe in the gospel, and then you, you had these folks who were Jewish that were saying, mm, yeah, but you're only halfway there, like you have to be Jewish in order to follow Jesus. And that meant you had to be circumcised, you have to eat kosher foods, you have, there was a whole structure of ways that you have to be in order to, you have to be like us in order to be part of this movement of Jesus Christ. And so what ended up happening is in Galatia specifically, Paul showed up and what once was this thriving community of everybody together had become this space where the Jewish Christians and the non-Jewish Christians were separated. And that was a struggle for the church in that day. And you had, um, you had, but, but, and, and the problem with exclusion and otherness is, is anytime we say, these are my people, we automatically have this assumption of like otherness. And it's otherness sometimes in the way that we, like, we don't fully see the person as they are. We make assumptions. It gets in the way. It creates and perpetuates this gap and this struggle. And that does a couple things. 
Um, but we definitely see it happening. And, and even like the, the categories that Paul lifts up, you have the, the next slide, Judy. We had Greek and Roman. Like if you were Greek, you were Greek. You had all the benefits of being a Roman citizen. But if you're not, they even created a word. They had a totally different word for everybody who was not Greek or Roman. Like you are with us or you're this other thing over here. There was also, I mean, you see this also in the Jewish community. You had the Hebrews, or you also have those who are free, and then you had those who were slaves. That was part of this, the structure of that day. And again, you have Christians. And again, this is the crazy thing. In the Church of Galatia, there were Christians who were showing up who were slaves and servants and saying, as a servant and as a slave, I want to worship Jesus. And then you had those who were free and had more benefits. And, and it's, it's no mistake this morning that today is Juneteenth, <laughs> where we remember our own and we wrestle with our own country's history of slavery and freedom and the ways that that created divisions that still continue. Um, you also have the Hebrews and the Jews that had their, had their group and their faith and their belief, and they also had a whole nother word. You're either Hebrew and you're Jewish, or you're a Gentile. How many of y'all come from a Gentile background, church? I know we don't think about it very often. And by that, I mean, if you are not from a Jewish background, if you did not grow up in a family of faith of Jewishness, you would have grown up as a Gentile. Absolutely. We do this in many other ways. My favorite is to say if there is the FSU fans, the FSU crowd, and then there is everybody else, right? I mean, I'm sure some of you may disagree with this particular team, um, but there's a, there is a tendency to throw that in there and be like, well, you know, you're with us or you're against us. Now, here's the thing about that. And our scripture, part of what Paul is doing is he's breaking down these divisions. Very clearly, there is no slave or free, there is no Greek or Jew, there is no male, female, whether it is your social status, your gender status, your economic status, your, like your status. Paul is saying these statuses do not separate us as Christians, all are one in Christ Jesus. I, would, I mean, there are moments where I'm like, it would be a lot easier if it weren't this way, Jesus, and yet this is what the scripture tells us. We are one in Christ Jesus. Here's the thing, with that unity, because again, we struggle with like, well, what does unity mean in this scenario? And I do think sometimes we're like, oh, well, we're all one, and you just kind of like cast it over. I do think, for, like, let's go back to the FSU football analogy, for example. If I were to bring a whole bunch of people on the field and say, we are going to play football, but here's the thing, y'all, we are all one team, just one team. That would be the most boring football game ever. <laughs> like, there would be nothing to that game because it would just be, I don't know, can you play football with one? I mean, you can't. The same thing, I mean, I, I don't think that this all in Christ calls us to say we are all perfectly alike. I do think what is important is to recognize that there's a huge difference between saying we're different and over all of that, we have clo been clothed in Christ. That is incredibly faithful. It's hard to do, but that's faithful. But if we're just saying, oh, we're all alike. I mean, it would be like if I were to say, hey, everybody, we're going to do all of our church communication via email. And somebody would come and say, well, I didn't hear about this. And I said, well, we sent out an email. But that person said, well, I don't have email. I'm not an email person. That would be a failure to recognize an important difference in the body of the, the church. I think we are called to see our differences. And again, I think this is biblical. Um, I don't, if, if, if we were all one and we were all created and, and it were, if there were no differences, we wouldn't have stories like Acts chapter 2. Again, keep in mind, this missional zeal of visiting Galatia in the first place was because of the Holy Spirit that came and gave all of the disciples different languages. There were folks, I mean, that, that Acts chapter 2 passage spends a long time specifically naming all the folks from all around the different nations and places where they have come from. There's difference serving passionately the same God. 
different languages for the sake of increasing our connection and our sharing of the gospel with others. Again, we see this image of diversity in the book of Revelation, that image that shows us what the kingdom of God will be. Revelation 7-9 is this beautiful passage where there's a vision of every, every nation, every tongue gathered before the throne of God, praising God together. There's a beauty and a richness to this tapestry that God has created. And it goes all the way back, even, even our very, very roots, our Abrahamic roots are not exclusive. Our Abrahamic roots, even back in, in Genesis, when God calls Abraham and said, you, Abraham, I'm going to bless you, that is in the category of saying, I'm going to bless you, and through you, I'm going to bless all the nations of the earth. God's project the entire time has been this creation and this work and this movement of beautiful difference and diversity that is not divided or divisive. And I think, again, it's when you get a group of people that fully agree on everything, when you get a group of people that look alike and think alike, that's easy to get people to agree on something. <laughs> When you get a group of people that look very different and literally speak different languages, that is something that only God can do. <laughs> That's the kind of miracle that we say, all right, this is the kingdom of God and it's amazing. Because what happens when we get stuck in our divisions is that we lose sight of the mission. We lose sight of the mission and the blessing because even, even this call that has come through Abraham to say, I'm going to bless Abraham. You're going to be the father of all, you're, you know, you're going to be the father of the chosen nation. Um, it became this fight in Galatia thousands of years later to say, yes, but we are the chosen ones and you're not. And Paul shows up and is like, wait, wait, Tema, let's go back to what God is doing. This call to be adopted into Christ. It is through Christ that we are brought in. It is through Christ that we are adopted in. And y'all, this is very much us because we're Gentiles in this situation, right? We're not here because we have perfectly followed the law. We're here because Christ Jesus has interceded on our behalf. We are here. We are in Christ Jesus, baptized into Christ. The beautiful image here is that we are clothed with Christ. Not that we look alike and think perfectly alike. It's that we are willing to put Christ over and above everything else. Again, that's hard. But one of my, one of my places that I have just been you know, grieving and continually praying about and thinking about, um, and I'm, I'm not here to, to pick a side or politics, but I will name... And I think y'all would agree that we are in a state of politics right now where less things are getting done because we have divisions and categories. When we, when we lean into the categories so far that we forget the mission, less gets done. We are called to be a people who are living for the sake of the gospel. So our call this morning, again, is to remember that here, here in the kingdom of God, there's no Greek or Jew. There's no slave or free. In fact, I would say with that, we would say we are all free for where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Not because there are no differences, but because with our differences, we're trusting that we have put on Christ and that Christ has called us for all are one in Christ Jesus. Abraham's children, God's children, and heirs to the promise, the promise of God. Amen? So this morning as the, the band comes up, we're going to have our final song, but just for a time of prayer, I think it's fair to just take a moment and say, all right, God, there are, there are times that we put other titles in front of Christ or Christian. There are times we put other things in the way, and so Lord God, we give those up. Let's pray. Lord, if there is anything that separates us from our identity in you, we let it go. 
And if we have trouble letting it go, then Holy Spirit, work with us and in us. Lord, for the spaces in our church and in our world where those divisions seek to pull us apart, help us instead to have eyes that value the beauty of difference without giving way to the hurt and harm of division. And we know that's easier said than done. But also, God, we know that you are a God of miraculous work, a God who says nothing separates us from you, Christ Jesus. And so, Holy Spirit, work in us that we would serve you and stay on faithful mission, that we would leave this place and share the real, deep, good gospel news with everyone that we encounter, Jesus. We love you. Forgive us. Make us one. Amen. Let us stand as we end worship this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to feel
And now may God bless you and keep you. Children of God, may you know who you are. No less than, no more than, and yet deeply beloved and called. So may you go from this place blessed to be blessing to others in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.